Hello, everyone. We are getting set up. Welcome to class. Let me add Danielle. And we are just about good to go. Can't see us yet, but in three seconds. Voila. Hey, guys. <laughs> it takes me a second. <laughs> Hi, Danielle. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. It's good to end. I feel like it's nice to end the week with some seed meeting. It's like some order for the end of yes. our week. And <laughs> we haven't done peyote stitch in this shop before. And I know you're a peyote stitch master. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. She's a little, she's just a little oh. bit, very much of a peyote stitch master. And <laughs> I mean, what's kind of cool, I think about your jewelry making is that you've done so many different techniques over the years. Didn't you start metal smithing? I did. Yeah. I started with wire wrapping and stringing. Okay. And metal smithing and then seed beading. And which is amazing because I think you do still kind of fuse all of those elements together, even if subtly. Even I though try. many yeah. folks know you now for seed beading. I feel like we get to like today we get to do some, you're doing more wire work than typically I feel like we get to do with you, which is fun. Yeah. Um, and I love when techniques collide. So today, like, our main technique we're focusing on is like the beautiful seed beaded tubes, but then you came up with this whole lovely wirework gorgeousness to go with it. Aww, so I'm so excited. <laughs> um, but before we jump in, how are you doing today? I'm doing okay. The the kids are feeling better, so it's a little bit quieter. But they're um, they're feeling better, but didn't go to school, so they're fighting. Okay. They're, so oh yeah. Ignore any screams you may hear in the background. Everything is okay. It's just you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just real life. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you for joining us today for class. And if you have one of the lantern kits, today's the day where we're kind of jumping into those. So we released two kits that, let me add Danielle's overhead. Oh, good. We okay. added, <laughs> these are the two kits we came up with. And I cannot believe how beautiful they are. Do you want to tell us a little bit about them? Yeah, yeah, sure. So the um, first one that we made was the colorway with this olive and eggshell and what is like a bronze alabaster. Earth and tones galore. Earth tones galore. So this one was really my favorite one. Well, until I saw the copper blue, but now I now I have. Well, that, I have that's the secret for in one minute. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Yeah, don't tell me any secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one. Um, well, what I, the reason I was excited about the the colors for for both kits is they have a brand new color in them that just came out. So I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, these are the new Miyuki Milkies. There's a whole line of them, but they're like. Um, so for starters, they have like a luster, like a little glow to them that is new to me. I hadn't seen before, and then they have they're the first I've seen that have a milky finish, like. They're opaque, but they're super cool. There's like, to me, look kind of like you stirred some cream in your coffee. Yeah, like, I was talking on the live show last night how much I have been drawn towards like opalescent glass where it's just like semi-transparent. Yes. Mm -hmm. I no wonder I was so drawn to the mixes you came up with for the, for these kits. That's such a fun little bonus. I didn't even yeah. know that our kits were debuting new new Miyuki colors. Yeah, no, they're, um, they're, pr I think they're the most recent one until the, until the check coded ones, they're the most recent ones that we got. So it's, nice. yeah, super cool. <laughs> so so in each kit, we gave, I think, uh, eight mixed grams and each one had three different colors. Mm -hmm. So you should have, folks should have more than enough than just for one necklace. That's actually why we gave four joy caps per kit. So you can make this necklace today. And then you could decide if you want to make another necklace or you could make like a matching bracelet. Um, so you pretty, you're going to get, be able to get a lot, I think, of distance out of a lot of mileage out of this kit, I think. Oh, yeah. Lots of extra seed beads. I had something I was working on with the rest of the colors um, for the colorway one that was like a peyote bracelet. And you'll know how to do that after today. Sweet. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so we're, today's class, we're basically going to go through the tube, and then we're going to work up some of the necklace. The main focus, though, of the technique today, I think, is where it's going to be the tube, because that's, like, the newest thing here. 
Um, and then Danielle's kind of constructed the two necklaces, each one a little differently to show some ideas of how you could put your necklace together. But that's where we like think have you can have the most freedom is exact, exactly how you want your piece to come together with your pendant bead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the pendant part is the unique part that I think may be new to a lot of folks. And then the rest of it is just wire. It's a um, basic techniques with some wire. Um, I think the most complicated thing I did was I made my own little connector and clasp up here. So which um, I did bring my block up if we want to play with that. But it was a simple little design. I think um, I think I actually, I learned how to do this from Sarah, from watching one of Sarah's lives. And then this one, I was making a little like hook clasp and I came up with it just kind of, I, I'm sure someone else has done it before too, but it was just something that I thought was quite, kind of cool looking. So Beautiful. yeah, and the other one, I just threw a lobster claw. So you have so many options. You can do anything that you like to do. And For then our, we have a couple of quick announcements today before we jump right in. The first one is that we sold out of both these kits like very quickly and so wanted yeah. to have a new one for today. So we couldn't do more of these kits, but we like we ended up choosing to do a new colorway, which turned out even, I think, more beautiful than Danielle and I expected. So, oh, it's Danielle, gorgeous. It there. Does it, does, don't you? I do have it, yeah. So it um, pulls in the bronze from one of the kits and the pewter from the other one. We chose so like the two metallics and ran with those. Exactly. And so those colors, the way they stitch up is just so it's neat. And you put those next to a copper aqua. Here's some of the blue. And here's the whole kit. Just all of the peanuts. So it basically has everything that we used in the other two. Uh, so you can recreate exactly what's in the PDF with this kit. Um, and of course, I'm going to finish this one and show it all done. But I wanted to highlight the difference in color here between the ones you had made and the ones that are uh, stock for TC. That's the silver, the antique silver. This is the pewter that you did. Yeah, I don't think I even mentioned much of this yet. Uh, Danielle and I worked with TRCast for these kits. And this blue one has our first custom batch in it. So Danielle was saying like, uh, like these, these fancy words, but basically TRCast has like their, their, their standard stock, but then they will, they're willing to make you things that you want, but they have some hefty minimums. Yeah. So it worked perfectly for the kit because we needed a bunch to make the kits. So in this one, we actually got their antique pewter, which is basically the base, like crazy high quality pewter without any plating. And instead it just is antiqued. So it creates this really cool, like, darker, rich tone. Um, and you won't find it anywhere else, because as far as I know, I, I don't know if any, anyone else who's custom ordered the joy caps. So no, I haven't personally done that for these caps. So in this kit, you get the pewter one. So if you want the blue kit, let me just show folks really That's quick. Fine. The easiest way is if you go to the new Sam Speech Shop app, uh, mm -hmm. put it right at the top there. If you click on the first item, you'll see this beautiful new kit with all the beautiful blue beads and copper. Um, and then you can just click add to cart there and purchase it that way. Um, and then the second thing you'll see in the app is we also custom order while we were at it, a black plate joy cap. Oh yeah. <laughs> which looks something like this. Actually, Danielle has them there. I'll show her in a yeah. second. But we're gonna do a Halloween kit in early October. So if you want to join that wait list, that's the app. you just go to the app and you click the button there. It says add to wait list. And then once we release it in early October, uh, you'll have first dibs on the kit. Cause we're only going to be making like 50 of that kit. So, and currently there's 25 people on the wait list. So if you do want that, definitely head to the app. I also linked to it in this post. If you want to join the wait list from the website itself, but here's what those caps look like, which is another one you will not find anywhere that's else. So cool. Is it okay to share a little bit about the idea, the premise yeah, here? Absolutely. I, absolutely. So you, you were saying necklace and earrings. So you get six caps instead of four. And then this is that flame color. Um, that is, it's it's actually, it's a Czech seed bead called Harlequin. And this one is a combination of like a flame orange and yellow. 
And it just looks like fire. There are, Danielle sent me a little sample of them. They're the most magical seedbeed I've ever seen because it's a two-tone <laughs> seedbeed and it looks like they're on fire. They're so special. Like you put I'm them on white and like they literally come to life. They're gorgeous. And we're combining those with the brown, like bronzy brown fire polish. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get a sneak preview of the thought that I've got for how to stitch them up is a uh, spiral. So we'll have like, um, it'll go in a, in a circle around the rope, all around your neck. Oh my God. Like a snake going through fire. It's so House of the Dragon. It's just like, yeah. It's going to be so cool. <laughs> it's going to be neat. I don't think we're ready for this Halloween kit. So it's gonna, no. yeah, so it's a whole necklace. We're gonna have <laughs> nice chain in the kit. The first time we're gonna have chain at Sam's bead shop. And we're gonna have matching earrings with some like fun Halloween and fall charms to go with those. So it's gonna be a really cool kit. And it's the first kit that'll be all inclusive. So you're gonna get all the findings, your jump rings, head pins, eye pins, like everything's included. You just have to bring some usually wildfire needles and you'll be good to go. Yeah. So those are all the announcements. Now it is time to jump into class. I will, <laughs> I tend to be a little quieter during Danielle's classes because I think folks like to focus on the seed beating. So I will be with you all. And if you have questions, shout them out in the comments and I can try to re relay them when we have some good moments to pause. But generally it's Danielle was pretty thorough. So we, I like to let her go through her process and then we'll, we'll ask questions later on, but. Yeah, no problem for that. questions. No problem, I'm, I'm good with those two. Okay. Yeah. I'm just cleaning up my mess really quick. I had to dump it out. I had to dump <laughs> out the beads. Yeah, and so, um, well, I was just gonna show the caps really quick again to explain what the structure of it. Okay. And so what these look like is um, we're first we're going to make a tube. So you've seen the caps, and this one I haven't glued yet. So um, we can we'll glue it together and along with the other one that we make today. But first we're just going to make a tube, and this is a lot like making a peyote stitch ring. In fact, it's the same exact thing. It's just uh, longer and um, a little more narrow. So we'll make that first, and in your handout are patterns. So the pattern in the original handout is here, and it's on a third page here, second page. It's the same pattern um, regardless of which colorway you got in the first two releases. Um, so if you got the uh, olive color with the earth tones, it's this one. And if you got purple amethyst, it's this one with the Peter. But the same process. And then if you're ordering the new kit, because the new kit only has two seaweed colors, that's the one I'm holding here. That one, there's, um, we, we're dropping a link to show where this is so you can find it. And it's the same thing, sort of, but it's just worked with two colors instead of with three. It actually kind of simplifies it up a little bit, too, to be honest. So Yeah. Those PDFs are so lovely to have as a little guide to go with the class. Oh, thanks. Yeah, they're fun. <laughs> and, and so I've got mine here. I'm just, like, I'm keeping it off off camera. Um, it the white paper always creates kind of, like, a little glare. So I've got yeah. it here, and I'm going to follow it as we work. And for folks who want that PDF, we have it linked in this video. It'll basically, it's a page on Danielle's website so that we can update it as needed. Right now it has a PDF for both the original two kits and then Danielle <laughs> magically already added a PDF for the new blue kit as well. So definitely you can download those, you can bookmark that page. Um, so you always have a reference point. And of course this class is saved to our YouTube channel. So you can, you'll have both forever as long as forever. as far as i know you'll have it forever <laughs> as long as there is youtube <laughs> yep. as long as we're still kicking <laughs> maybe beyond that too <laughs> probably beyond that yeah <laughs> aliens come to earth they're like wow they love seed beads <laughs> <laughs> they really love seed beads especially the one in seattle that lady had a lot of them <laughs> what's this what's this wall what's this <laughs> it's the seed bead singularity here <laughs> It's so wild. So I was just going to just double check with you again. I can't remember which color we said we wanted to do for the demo. Which one do you feel is going to show up nicer? Oh, gosh. You always make me have the, the hard decisions. Well, I can give you a hint. I feel like Peter's going to be hard to see. Okay. Then you've, you you know, you've taught a few of these classes before, so I'm going <laughs> to leave it. Uh, 
leave it to you. I'm feeling like this one's going to be the easiest for people to like track, right? When we start yeah, going. Yeah, they definitely are three very different colors. That's probably yeah. smart. So let's do that. And I'll work with our, so the kits came with this beautiful bronze. It is gorgeous. That's, I think it's actually my favorite one. And it matches the tones really nicely. It's so warm. It, it pulls them out. Very cool. And so in this handout, what you'll see is um, the colors are lined up as ABC. And so you'll want to, first thing I always do is I lay them out that way because that's how I can keep track of what I'm doing. And it also enables me to use the same pattern with different colors that I want to use that maybe weren't in the original. So if you have any of your ITZY beads at home, you want to try, this is how to use them. So just start with A. And then in, I'm working with this one. So I'm going to go to this one for B. That. And I, I get these in like gigano bags so I don't have tubes for, for all of them. But um, if you want these like colors, they're, um, I believe they're, they're actually here somewhere. Oh yeah, they're over here. The names. <laughs> okay. And um, so ABC, lay those out. And then for your thread, you don't really need to cut very much. Uh, 35 to 40 inches is plenty. And I worked this colorway with the green wildfire. You could also use the beige, look magic. And I worked the ones that have the pewter and amethyst. I worked those with gray. The gray looked really cool with them. This is like the gray color for reference. I, I really like that one. But I wanted to highlight also that um, because of the way we're going to glue them in, the only place you really ever see your thread is on these sides. And we're going to cover those up. So the, the thread color maybe isn't even as important for this design. Mm -hmm. that may, yeah. So use what you got. Um, I'm going to be using 0.006 in black. And that is the um, easiest to see for demos. So it's the one I usually go to. Let's but I do a, believe let's I Let's a bigger roll, Danielle. Oh, I know. And I'm running out, too. It's crazy. Like, I go through it so much. It really does get used up fast. I go through it faster than seed beads, which is kind of crazy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, yep. you, you're Sarah, using it more, right? For everything. Sarah, these caps are called uh, Joy Glue in Joy Caps. It's a really cool product Tiercast came up with, and Danielle's done a ton of various um, designs using them. You, should, you can see on her website as well. We currently, we just have a limited stock on them. We kind, we've kind of wiped out tier cast while doing all these kits. So if you want some, check out the Sam's Bead Shop, uh, like a little collection we made on the homepage or on the app. And we have a small selection of the joy caps, some of the extra seed beads from the original kits. Um, there's lots to check out on the website there. Are they still out of stock, you know? With Oh yeah. Color. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we wiped them out. <laughs> we did. Yeah. I forgot to tell you in case you're looking there, we have them at JB too. So what? I can give you the JB part numbers for them. You can get them from us. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those were one of the, um, the finishing touches collections when these came out and it was uh, January, 2020 when they released them. I think it was around about that time. Oh, um, what, a, what a time of the world. <laughs> I actually got to help. But with doing some of the testing and demoing for it. And then when I was in Tucson with them, I got to do uh, teaching with, we actually did a lot more work with the other parts that they'd come out, the hammer tone, that was the next one out. But um, I might be getting the timing wrong in my head now that I think about it. These might've been slightly earlier than that. But regardless, you've done like so much designing with them. Like if you go to Danielle's site, she has a whole giant article of like, that links to everything she's done with the joy cups. These were so fun. They were really cool. I mean, I loved making beaded ropes before. And then um, that's actually, that's how I got in touch with Tracy from TRCast. That was oh. like a very first thing I ever talked got to talk to her about. She saw something I posted on Instagram. A friend of mine that does um, work with yarn had created a really beautiful tapestry. And I made her a beaded rope bracelet to match her tapestry. Wow. And then I was finishing it with the um, bead caps from Tierra Cast, you know, the, like the ones you put over a bead. 
And mm -hmm. so Trish is like, hey, um, we have this new thing and you you were making lots of ropes. Would you mind testing it? And that's mm -hmm. how I got started with them. Next thing you know, like I'm just every time I have a new idea, I was harassing them. And, <laughs> what would you yeah. say the advantage of this part is over another rope finishing technique? Mm -hmm. What, yeah, what would you and, say like the main plus of why why you do you why do you like to use these? Oh, um, because they help out with the structure of it. Number one, they fit a lot better. Um, I actually should have thought to bring. I will definitely do that for the next one we do. Um, the Halloween one is, is an actual rope, beaded rope. So mm -hmm. um, I'll bring some samples to show you. But the bead caps are beautiful. However, they move around. So like you've got your end of your rope, right? And the bead cap will sit there. And to get it on there, you have to like stitch up through it and then maybe have like a bead or something to hook through, come back down. And you're doing this all under the cap with a needle trying to go through and connect every seed bead up through the cap. And it's doable, but really tricky. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always look clean. Sometimes it just looks a little messy. Mm -hmm. there's other ways you can finish them but at the end of the day this was just like boom and done like yeah. a little bit of glue around the peg glue it in you have to wait a little while before you can wear your bracelet but yeah which is like a little okay so it was a created actually making it to like just to basically cut out a little some of the end steps then yeah mm -hmm. okay got it that's super helpful for just the clarity of like why this why this this part in in this technique thank you yeah and so I'm going to just jump in real quick and show you how to do the stitching and we'll, we'll build one together. Um, so I'm going to string rows one and two. So if anyone's new to peyote, um, we just did a really good Michael's class on this where we went into real depth of like pattern reading. Um, and I believe that'll be live on like their YouTube Tuesday or something. So you can check it out there. But we um, always string rows one and two first, which doubles your count for that that first step. So see how it says one and two. So I'm gonna just string all these in that order. And then when you come along and you create your third row, which is what's showing here, that's when it creates all the pop-outs of your up and down bead. And then all the rows after that are just putting your new bead into the next up bead all the way to the end. So let's do that really quick. I'm gonna string, let's see, it starts with two C. 4A, <laughs> we're not, and let's see, there's 4B, and 4C again, and last but not least, we need 2A, and then you'll know you've got it right when you look at it and you see what well, looks kind of like a pattern. You should have these four in the center and then these two on the outside and two on the edge. So three sets of four in the center and two on the edge. And once you've got that, leave just a little bit of a tail. It doesn't have to be too crazy. All we're gonna do with this tail is weave it back in a few places. And the bonus is because we're gluing, your edges are gonna be like locked up on themselves. Like, right, see, so uh, weaving in, I think you can be a little lazy about it if you want to, because the glue is going to secure all that and then just cover it up. So we'll show all of that. But now I'm going to go over and start adding in row three. So I need to start with an A. And you'll always want to skip your first bead and go through your next bead. There's the next one here. And just pull through. When you do that, you'll get this little pop right there. You see how this one's sitting kind of side parallel to the one above it? That's what you want it to look like. Don't fret too much if it doesn't exactly look like that when you first start, because there's lots of opportunity from here on out to tighten and fix. So um, in my pattern, I've got another A coming next, so A bead. I want to skip the next bead in the row and then come up through the bead that's after that. Again, I'm just going to pull that tight. And our next bead is a C. So I'm picking up one C bead. Skip the next, go through the one after that. And so each time I'm doing this, oh, go ahead. Do you have any ability to zoom in just a little bit for us? Oh, yeah. Let's make it lower. It might get a little bit a smidge darker when I lower it. OK. But it's still, is that OK? Yeah, now we can really see those C beads. Yeah, I forgot I did that earlier. It does help a lot, huh? 
I feel like we're with you now. <laughs> yeah. And so, so far what we've strung for row three, we have just strung two A and there's one C. We need another C and I'm getting this all off that pattern that I showed earlier. It's sitting, sitting right next to me off camera here. There's that next one. Now I need to, to go B and B. So here's one B, skip a B. And then you wanna go through the next one. One more. And we skip a bead and head through the next one here. Okay, and so, so far what I've been doing after, you know, maybe I've rather add is just pulling apart my working and tail thread. And I'm doing that just to make sure everything gets tight. And those beads are all kind of popping out like that. And don't worry about the little bend because that's going to fix itself when we add row four. But so far, we're just finishing up row three. We added two of the B beads. And now that's all that's left is to put two more A. So, and you're adding the beads one at a time. So skipping the next bead and going through the one after that. Pulling apart, working a tail thread to get that to tighten. And here's the last one. Okay. For the next row, would you be willing to kind of for someone who hasn't done peyote stitch, would you be willing to kind of take us through what you're reading on the PDF? And yeah. then how that translates to which bead you're then going through on the on the stitch? Yeah, and so what you'll want to look at first, um, when you get these patterns, they'll typically have a pattern chart that looks like this one. And um, I identified the starting bead here by the arrow. So you know which one is your first bead in the row. So that um, that's very helpful. So you see how there's like 2C here. So we strung 2C, 2A, 2A, 2B. That was what we did for rows one and two. And then we just now we just turned and we added an A, went through the A, added an A, went through the C. And so we kept doing that all the way till we got to here. So where we are now is we're exiting from that C, having completed all those beads. And we finished that row kind of goes up and you work your way back down with the next row. With, with yeah, the yeah, like we string it. And then after we string it, we come down and we just adding a bead, skipping a bead and going through the next one. And the only part of this that's even like remotely tricky is the part I'm about to show, which is making sure none of your beads flip. Sometimes you add your C bead and maybe it puts itself over here. It's only a problem in this one step in this first row. And after you get these rows one, two, and three done and your row four is on, they're locking it in. Everything after that is so much easier. Okay. This is the part where you want to pay attention only because we do have a solid pattern going. Like, you know, where their beads, are, it matters which side the beads ended up on. But the good news is there's a really easy way to error check it right here. Um, so you get your pattern. And this is where the picture chart comes in real handy. And you want to lay your work next to it. So I'm doing that here. And it's, you know, it's a little bent, but don't sweat that it's bent because it's going to get fixed when we, when we go back through. But I'm going to figure out first which is which. So this side is this side. Here's our 2C, 2C. I should have an A, an A, a B, and a B. I should have a C, a C. And I should have an A. If that's wrong, if these numbers over here, you want to pay attention to this side and compare it to these edge pop-up beads here. If any of that's wrong, what's probably happened is your work is flipped, meaning maybe it did this while you were stitching. And now you don't have the counts right. So hopefully that makes sense. And the way to fix it, if it's not right, is just come along and look at it and just bend it back to, you may have to do some flipping around, but just making sure that you're edge beads here all match. Super helpful. Thank you, Danielle. And hopefully that helps someone. And, and also another trick that I was sharing with my last class was that um, if getting this part to work out at the very beginning of a pattern is stressful in any way, sometimes I'll just take one solid color and I'll build rows one through four in that solid color. And then oh. I'll start the pattern. And then pull those four rows out at the end. Oh my gosh. So that can help you. There's also some other tools out there like the um, 
there's a peyote start tool. Some people like to use that. I actually am um, used to use it a lot and don't use it anymore because of this method where I can pull um, is quicker than trying to find where I put that tool. <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhere here. <laughs> I don't know. But that can help lots of folks. I think it's from Deborah Moffitt. If you Google Deborah Moffitt, it'll come up. Cool. Um, yeah, so that's rows one, one through three. And so now we just got to throw on row four. And row four, so we're exiting from our C down here at the bottom. That's this one. And we're going to add the A next. And it's going to pop up and go right through the up bead, which is that A bead right there. So here's our A bead going through. And then we'll just follow the pattern along, reading what it says here in row four. And if you're working with the other colorway, this is the exact same. It's the exact same co um, counts. So just your A bead will be a different color than, than the A bead I've got here. Would you say it's easier for a first timer to try it like with one color to start? Yes. For the whole, yeah. for the whole it is, it is absolutely easier. In fact, the first time I ever did peyote stitch, I was doing solids and I would just make an entire solid like band, which looks really cute. Like yeah, you just you make like, they're really pretty. Yeah. And they're fun and you can put a charm at the end and then there you go. And color blocking is so in style right now. It came back. I feel like it. Like, I feel really like came. you brought it back <laughs> single-handedly. <laughs> well, I'd like to think I did, but I feel like it's just, the trend is real. I just people are really loving on it right now. We've got lots so, of questions on the PDF. So folks, the PDF is totally free on Danielle's site. I have a link to it. I think it's the first or second link in this post. Uh, bookmark that page. It has uh, two PDFs available on that page on Danielle's site. Yeah, I think Which, so. Yeah, you don't you don't have to purchase the kit to to see the PDF. So you can you can still check that out. And I've got a bunch of other beaded rope cap patterns on there too. Like a lot. It's kind of amazing. So you can make more of these and get the get the caps from Sam, and then you can go and just start making all kinds of. And there's um, different ways you can use these caps, like as ropes and things. So, so many things you can do. And I think I've done uh, something a little funny. I was supposed to put two B. We did two A and two B. I must have only put one, or I spun it. Ooh, our first control Z. I know, right? Well, I get all chatty, and then I maybe didn't quite do something right here. All right, let's see what I did. I did definitely go through the wrong side. I think it's helpful to see that, though, because you folks saw that she just went exactly back from when she came to undo those couple seconds. Yeah. Now, it may be that I have to go all the way back because I think what I did is I flipped my work when I was demoing what can go wrong. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to air check it one more time make sure I didn't totally mess it up. So let's see what I did. So this is my outside. So I definitely want to be stitching on the side that's going over here. So C is my C, my A, B, and C. So I want to go into that bead. And what I did before was I went into this side. So here's my first A. If it can help, you can actually just work it on top of the pattern. But I know for sure I want to go this way. The only tricky part for me is I like to hold it. And I like to work my peyote stitch downward because it helps me with my tension. So that's one way. You can kind of lose your orientation easily if you're like me and you have to pick it up. Oh, so there's two A, and now we need our two B. And then also notice how like just immediately it didn't look right to me and I spotted that so quick. That's the chart. The chart can help you get the visual for that and you'll be able to fix it in, in time. You, what you're going for is you want it to look stripey down like that. And so you can kind of even predict your pattern a little bit in that way. Anyone else like totally excited by this? Because I'm, <laughs> folks know that I'm not, I'm still do not feel like a seed beater. It's going to take me many years, but like Danielle makes always feel very clear and doable, even though I know it'll be hard for me the first time, but like you always make it feel very like that it's not, it's not unsurmountable. 
Oh, I think you'll you'll get it the first try. I mean, you got the other ones that we did. You're just you had them in like the first hour. With you some, did writing the leave first. Some sentence enhancers, but oh, well, see, <laughs> nobody heard those, so it's okay. <laughs> and even if they did, they'd still be like, yeah, we agree. I know, but I, I set aside like one of each of these kits for myself because I really wanted to try out this. Oh, you did. Because I've never done peyote. I've mostly done brick stitch and like oh. right angle weave. I've never done peyote. Oh, I see. Yeah, no, you'll get it. You'll get it. It's the only part that's really annoying is the tension and then that first row. So if you just work okay. a few solid ones first, then you'll get it. I'm going to definitely do that then. Yeah. And so I finished row four. Row four is all done. And so now I'm just going to start working row five and we'll just, we'll stitch to the end. Um, but row five is going to be, um, much easier because now we can see where we are. We can use our tail as a reference. We know that this side is the, not the side we're building into you. And this is the side we're building into you. And all we have to do is follow our, our word chart and we got it. And oh, I forgot to say how many, how do I know what row I'm on? Cause eventually you might lose your spot. Um, in addition to using like a, a post-it to guide you on the, on the pattern, you can count. So I've got one, two, three, four. And this piece is so small, it's only got 12 rows. So you'll be able to just do a little quick count and get there, even if you have to set it down and come back. So row four is done. We know that because we counted one, two, three, four. And now we're starting row five. So just heading over here to my word chart, looking at row five. And I want to start with a B and then go to 2A. So here's my B. And we'll come up here. And let's do 2A. And so these are the up beads. Now it's so much easier to see what you're doing because you've got these very clear, um, Jill Wiseman calls them the sticky up -y bead. <laughs> She's so cute. She's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Then here's the next one. So this is 2C and I'm just reading that chart off offline here or off, uh, off camera here, 2C. Here's 2B. And then the last one I want to add is an A. All right, so there's row five done. Let's do row six, we're halfway done. And it'll just start going super faster for you. And you'll eventually be able to just do this while you're doing other stuff. Like you can be watching TV or chatting with friends, listening to a podcast. That's what I do. I put on podcasts or like just kind of interesting stuff on YouTube and then stitch away. Or a lot of times when I'm watching, um, watching other lives, you know, I do the same. <laughs> What's your favorite podcast right now? Uh, I have a lot of them that I'm listening to. Um, like, uh, let's see one that I've like, continually continue to listen to is the Lex Freeman podcast because it's just what interesting is that about everything he interviews <sighs> um scientists he interviews politicians uh me medical professionals just famous people um and his perspectives on things are uplifting which I really appreciate right now you know, yeah oh fun. I was I'm always looking for new podcasts to check out and he keeps everything so positive, but then still real and with giving you true information that like maybe you didn't know about. He does. He's really into AI. He's really into okay. like, um, like he did a whole thing on self-driving cars and all oh, just such cool stuff. I'm, you I'm really. You have a tech background, don't you? What's that? Don't you secretly have a tech background that I learned at BeadFest? Well, I had an IT degree. That's what I did for life before this life. Did folks know that? <laughs> I was so amazed. <laughs> it was, I, I worked in like my job was supply chain and, and purchasing, but it was um, for a tech company. So I ended up doing a lot of things like writing a statement of work. You have to understand a lot of their systems and how they work. And I did database administration. That's actually huge in supply chain. Tons of database stuff. Oh my goodness. And let's see, where on row seven already how'd that happen i don't even know we get chatty and then you have a whole necklace 
Oh, no, I'm on row six. So I've got two C. There's my two A. See, I wasn't even really looking at the word chart, but I can just tell because of the stripey, right? I know it's going to be an A. Or you can kind of just keep following it down. And then one B. But then it switches on you in the middle because it, it changes direction. So I always get caught out by that. That's the cool thing about seed beating, though. It's super meditative. It can take you out of your mind for a little while and make you focus because you have to. It's not like, you know, demands like, hey, I got to do math kind of focus, but it's uh, um, enough that you just have to be sort of present. Hmm. You do a lot of yoga also, right? Yeah, I love yoga. It's it's really peaceful. And I found another studio. So during COVID, my studio closed. And I was really sad because I loved that place. That was my happy place. And then they, um, at first they just went virtual and then they just closed all together. And Aww. yeah, but then I threw a friend of a friend who I used to actually do local teaching for at a place called Workshop over here. Mm -hmm. Workshop also didn't survive COVID, but um, the friendship did. And she referred me to the owner of a yoga studio who wanted someone to teach mala stringing. So in exchange for that, I get free sound bath and free classes and free TRX. <laughs> it had me a free yoga. <laughs> we'll teach free yoga. Why is Teddy the coolest person? It's like there's something too like about the kiddos that made the yoga like uh, go from being kind of neat to do and fun to necessary and required. <laughs> I know. For sanity, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a lot of yoga during like the first year of the pandemic. Me and me and my buddy Adrian. Oh yeah, on on YouTube. <laughs> Adrian on YouTube was that a like um, is it a, a yoga class online? She she's just like the main. She's like the biggest YouTuber, you, you, yoga lady, yoga with Adrian, and she has like a lot of easy practices which I enjoy. Oh really? I do that. love her stuff. She does like these each January. She has a new thirty day challenge, so I was doing that. That is the coolest. Yeah, see that. For uh, especially for you know jewelry designers, it's very good for your because you'll get locked shoulders after doing this for a while, and you really got to open up your shoulders and then all the sitting. You got to open up your hips. You got to do all that. For me, it started to really help with my wrist strength because I've like, for some reason, my whole life I've had really weak wrists. The oh yeah. Actually, caused me a lot of pain. Oh and no. I like. At first, like I couldn't do much in yoga, but as I did more of it, I would actually gain more strength in my wrists to be able to put weight on them. And just helps me in general, just doing computer work and all that too. Oh yeah. It's just, yeah, it's so healing. That's I like neat, that I didn't know you were into that too. That's cool. Oh, absolutely. I like that it can be like taken at whatever level you want it to be. Like there's chair yoga. If you don't, if you are a little less mobile, there's like adaptive versions. That is very cool. Yeah. And it's a great way to start too. Because a lot of the poses, you can't just get into those um, without injuring yourself right away. And you might not realize in the moment that you're getting injured either. Um, but like um, the studio that I used to go to, the one that closed, it was hot yoga. And um, that for some reason just makes it easier to not get injured, I feel like. Really? I can't, I can't stand it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't used to love it, but um, when, because I used to do a lot more, I, I don't do as much anymore, but I used to be, like, I go to races and do a lot of running, and I was starting to get IT band issues and things like that, and that's actually what brought me to yoga first, was the IT band stuff. Really? Yeah, and, like, you know, as a runner, your hamstrings are useless. Like, they just, they're, they're bad. So you have to do something to, like, kind of make you make your more, you more balanced because you're like super unbalanced if you're just running and you're not doing it at the kind of crossfit and so that's why someone else that i used to run with was like yeah if you go to this hot yoga studio it helps you because like i couldn't even do any of the poses at first and then after like three months in the hot studio i could do it wow that was pretty fun me and heat's a not a great combo <laughs> But you live in general. California, so I feel like you kind of like by default, you're just gonna get the heat whether you like it or not. <laughs> oh, thank God I'm in the Bay Area because I'm it's okay <laughs> here. Do you get at least a, does it cool off for you some days? It's oh, awesome the, we're so near the coast that it stays pretty cool all year long. We get like 
pretty much between 60 and 75 most days. That's and then not bad. Now we're getting our more heat waves, of course, as the world changes, but uh, it's still not as hot as many other places. Yeah, like, can you imagine Arizona right now and, like, parts of Texas and, yeah. So, so warm. Even up here, we had some 110 days, which for Seattle, that's just crazy. Like, we don't get that. That's wild. Yeah. All right, now that we've had our a lovely tangent, <laughs> you, know? you want to tell us kind of where you're, what you're working on now in the stitch? So, I'm on row 10. And I'm using the post-it because I kept having to count my sides. So I switched back to my post-it and I'm just following along here and adding whatever bead is next in my in my pattern. And right now I'm at the last A, A bead. And I'm within a row of being done. And then we get to do some fun stuff. I was putting a whole little tube together, but I got just a little, a little further to go. I love the post-it trick because it reminds me of like taking standardized tests where I used to like <laughs> put the bubble in the wrong place. My teacher always told me to put a sticky note and move it down as I went. It's not dissimilar of a concept. <laughs> oh, is it? Uh, that sounds really similar. Yeah. It's just so you don't like basically don't so you don't skip a row, so you don't make an error. Like it just helps guide you. It's the same idea. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it's um, it's really handy and just like I'm scatterbrained lately. Like reason reason one thousand why yoga is needed for me is like my brain. I I set something down, I go do something else, and I come back and like what, what what was that? <laughs> I don't know. Is it possible? Like how easy it is? Someone's asking about how to pause a project in the middle when you're doing this. Is it possible? Yes, absolutely. I have some tricks. Like, so what I do, like if I got interrupted right now and had to go break up a fight, which is not out of the realm of possibility, um, <laughs> I would set this down right here and I would go over here and just take a pencil and just mark. So I just did my 2A and now I need my 1C and I would just put a little dot right there. A little, sorry, I'm off camera. I would put a little dot right here, a little pencil dot and I'd go. And then later when I come back, I know where I am. I get my handy dandy eraser, erase that pencil dot, and then keep going. And if it happens again, a new pencil dot. Yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense. Especially when they get more elaborate. Like this pattern, you can figure it out just by looking at it probably. But there are some, when you really get into this, that you'll want to mark. And they're epic. They're ones that are going to take you days anyway. Like some of these ones made of size 11 Delica, where they're like 14 rows and, oh, yeah. Or 14 columns, sorry. But they're, um, when you finish something like that, it is so satisfying. I don't know if Cindy, is Cindy Knight in here tonight? On oh, the yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So she, she makes epic, guys. She makes epic peyote stitch cuffs. If you can check out her Insta, it's like, wow. <laughs> and so that patience, that being able to do that. And she's got puppies. So puppies and um, beautiful dogs that my sons need to hang out with. They will love. They will love that so much. I'm. I'm finding. I'm seeing if I can find her Insta. Oh yeah. She does some really inspiring stitching. Oh, beautiful things. Cindy, remind us. The name of, what's the name of Cindy's? Uh... Oh, Imaginarium Creations. I think there Cindy. might be a, a dot after Imaginarium. Yeah, Imaginarium dot Creations. Oh, I'm already following her. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen you. You like all of them. You're in there. Oh, my goodness. Yes, 2B. If folks who don't know Cindy yet, she is, we, we call her Cuz because she <laughs> only has a, a Facebook. So she can join us here for classes, but only because she has to, hence her name. <laughs> yep. We love her very much. And I got to meet Cindy. Oh, in where? Person, in real life. Because um, we're local to each other. So, yeah. And I got to meet the pups, too. No, look at these dogs. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally true. There we go. Like this all set. We did it. 
and that's it. Well, almost. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to put it together. And this part, honestly, this is super easy and you will get the hang of it. We're going to zipper stitch it shut into a tube and then glue some little tubes into it. And then all of our bead weaving is done. Nice. Um, but all you have to do is, so we're going to take our working side, which is this side here, and we're going to bring it over into the tail side and then start stitching through the up beads. If that makes any sense. So um, here's what it looks like on, on a real piece. So here's our piece. And um, that image that I was just showing you guys, not only is it in the PDF, but it's a there's a gigantic one of it on my website in that same place where the PDF is. And you can drill to it and see it. If you've got a big monitor, you'll be able to see every little bead. Um, but we want to put this into a tomb shape. So just fold it over like you're making a taco. Delicious. Yep. And now you're thinking about tacos. Always. <laughs> and so from here, all you want to do is just, we're exiting from this bead, right? Come over here and go through the next one. And when you do that, I actually, I work at kind of, I work at facing downward. Like that's the more comfortable hand position for me. And so I'm trying to get that to focus properly for you guys. But so you see, we just connected this side to this side. And now my my thread's exiting from this bead on this side, from this one. My next up bead on the other side is here. All we're going to do right now is we're going to do like a zipper zigzag from up bead to up bead, switching sides every time. So there's up bead to up bead. Here's our next up bead over here. And just join every single upbeat. And we designed this pattern so that your arrows are going to connect now so that both sides, the stripe will continuously like weave around. And what I'm doing here is going to disappear. You won't be able to tell where you did this seam. It's like a slip stitch. So there's that one. I felt like the light was better facing this way. It's a little awkward stitching position for me, but hopefully it's working out. Um, going up bead to the next one. And that's pretty much all you got to do is just zipper, zipper. It's identical and to zipper. That's so cool. Yeah, and it's easy to see. Um, I don't know how easily it's coming across on a camera, but in person, it'll be very obvious to you what your upbeat is. And all you have to do is just go upbeat on one side, upbeat on the other side, and then just keep going. Tighten up your other tail here. And now that little image I was showing you over here, you want to come up through the tail bead. So that's this over here. Just want to make sure you loop up. And go through where your tail's coming up. And bonus points if you all your sea beads go flying with your pattern sliding it. <laughs> <laughs> I did that over here. They're, they're like all over now. It's going to be a bead mix. They're just mixed yeah. up again. They're just mixed up and ready to go again. Exactly. Yeah. I always tighten. So I'll pull. This is my tail here. This is my working side. And I'll just pull and tighten it. And there you go. The tube's done. All we've got to do is just get rid of our thread. And then, yeah, Cindy's got a good comment going there. So if you do this loosely, that's totally fine because at the end, you'll be able to tighten it all up, especially mm -hmm. when you get to the part where um, where we're doing this, where we're pulling this direction, it really tightens it. And then opportunity to go back through it. So you've got to weave in anyway. And my kind of default way of doing that is I take my side that's already got its needle on it. Make sure you don't go through the loop and create a knot there. Um, and I'm just going to go through the beads following what you'll hear seed beaders call the existing thread path, which just means that um, you're going to copy what you did before. And so with peyote stitch, we're going to go through, for example, in the bead I'm exiting here, it's like, like in chess, your character can only move a certain direction, right? I can either go through this one, or I can go through this one 
But what you wouldn't want to do is just jump straight up to this one, because if you did that, your thread's going to show crossing those two beads right there. Oh, but so, so just there's a lot of thread paths going on. So you have some options. It's not too strict here. Exactly. No, like if I wanted to, I could just keep going diagonal this way. Mm -hmm. It's like you can move all the ways a queen can. <laughs> but you can, but you can, but you get to change direction. So that makes you more of a, oh, like a queen. Got it. Yeah, you're right. I don't play enough chess. <laughs> and you could turn, like you could turn back. You can do this, but you can't do what I just did there. Where I went through all those. But you can turn just through this bead. Go ahead and pull that, and then go diagonal again if I want, all the way back down. My goal is to end at the end because remember, we're going to put glue on it. And if I can get that glue to cover up the end of my thread, then I've just got an extra little layer of security. One thing to say about what I'm doing right now is it's a little tricky to get them through because these beads are pretty tight. But if you kind of point up with your needle, it'll do it. It'll work. OK, I'm going to trim this one, get rid of it. You can use scissors, flush cutters, burner. Um, what do I have handy? I have flush cutters handy, so that's what I'm going to use. You know, I we were talking about the thread burner like, mm -hmm. last, for our last class together, and yeah. I totally forgot that I had stocked it. <laughs> it's oh, do you website. have it? Oh, yeah, folks want the thread burner. I have it on the website. Oh, hey, let me let me bring that up then. Let's see. Um, I know I brought it up with me. Here it is. Okay, so I've got the thread burner here, and I'll do that with this next one. So I want to get this threaded, so just really quickly, I'm going to flatten the end of it. There's that side. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and just bring it, I'm going to show another way to weave in in case anyone is having the same struggle with it being tight. You can do this. Just turn. Let's go like that. If you feel like your zipper is good and it doesn't need any extra reinforcement. And then I'm going to burn it. And so normally what I just did there, that would not be enough weaving in, right? On a normal peyote stitch piece, you would definitely want to keep going and get more weaving and going. But we're going to cover all of that in glue. And it's just going to make it so much um, faster. So there you go. So glue, um, I use E6000. Um, a lot of folks will also use some of the, um, Aileen's makes a metal and jewelry glue. You'll see that at the at craft stores and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, Lori, I agree. It does, it's a battery guzzler. And I have several brands and they all guzzle battery, every single one. And um, I open, I'm gonna open a new one and show you guys a few things about E6000, it's, it, the good news is it doesn't gush like hypo, right? But um, you do still want to be able to get the cat back on it kind of quick because it's very fumey. Make sure you have something open, like a window. When you first get your tube, it'll probably be sealed like that. And the cap has a little point in it. And um, can puncture it. I used to use like the end of a Q-tip sometimes to do my rope caps. That's a great tip. I wish I remembered my own tip and brought a Q-tip up. But I'm just going to put a little glue on the side and just kind of whirl it around. Do you find the E6000 is a bit better hold for this sort of project than, say, like a hypo cement? Yeah, I do. I mean, you can probably get hypo to work. The thing is, you should have put a lot on. Okay. And then when you're putting this on, just decide what you'd like to be. Your loop. So your loop is going to face um, a certain direction and just choose a side that you like. What I did kind of by default with my loops is I wanted my loops to be facing kind of like above where my points were. And this glue is thick. So once that's another thing I like about E6 is because once you've got it kind of like placed in there, it doesn't wiggle too bad. Whereas other glues that are very thin and, and have less thickness to them, they um, when you get the, the peg in there, it might move on you after you've placed it. But this tends to hold it like I can move it around and that's really nice. Now it's in no way set and it's in no way secure, but it's at least going to hold its position. Yeah, more nice. So I, I do like that. And that's great for ropes too. Handy tip for later. Um, so here's 
our other side. Also, if you do any label printing, like if you um, if you have Etsy shop or whatever, I, I use the other side of my label print where I peeled off the label as a place to put my glue. Because then it peels off of it. I'm just getting this little glue end in there. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna line up my hoops. This is the only thing you wanna focus on just a little bit is to kind of line them up. And you can see that easier at the side. If you kind of hold it to the side, you can, there we go. And all you would need to do is let that dry for a little bit. Let me get my cap on this before it it goes all crazy on. Do you like the little tubes E6000 so you kind of use them up before it dries You up? know what, I really do. The thing that happens with E6000, I used to buy the really big ones. Yeah. And eventually um, what happens is these caps won't come off anymore. And then you're sitting there <laughs> like with your tools trying to get the caps off. And I, I can get it to for the, for, for the amount that this will last me. That isn't going to be as severe. But like I had this really big one once where I had to throw half of it away because I couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. like, couldn't dispense anymore. And that felt really wasteful and kind of like environmentally unfriendly. <laughs> so yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So that's that's it for the caps. So the rest of the PDF, it focuses on, and you can just guide me, Sam, on like what you think um, time-wise and everything, if how much you'd like me to cover. I just went crazy with wire. I grabbed all the wire that um, I saw that you carried. Um, so things like our 22 gauges. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, so you went for the German style wire for this kit. Yes, yeah, I went with German style. And I used a combination of 22 and 20. Um, I don't think I used very much 24. Yeah, my 24 is still sealed, so I never even used my 24. So yeah, all you need is 22 and 20. I think I said that somewhere here. Yeah, given time, would you walk us through a little bit? Um, would you kind of yeah. show us your final pieces and kind of see your ideas of how you connected some of the beads together? And then maybe we yeah. can do a couple wraps. Like, I love that wrap you've done on the lacy coin there. Perfect, yeah, let's do that. And so um, a lot of these techniques are going to be ones that you guys recognize because Sarah is um, the expert and she has shown in so many different demos, like all of the stuff that I've done here is all stuff I probably learned from watching her. And the um, case in point being knotted headpin. So someone out there is probably saying, knotted headpin alert. Um, <laughs> I got knotted head pins here and that was what I did. I created a bunch of these and the handout actually walks you through step-by-step step how many to make and how to link them. So it says, hey, I made three knotted head pins. I put three peanuts on it. And then I put a seed bead on top of each one. And with this one, I actually did a different color on each drop. So I did the green, the beige and the bronze. And so there's your three knotted head pins. I love the little peanut stacked up. It's so sparkly. I love it too. It's really gorgeous. And that color in the new kit is going to be so stunning. Mm -hmm. Those peanuts are, I was just going to look and see if they're the same because I couldn't tell for at first glance. Oh, did I use the same ones? That's possible. Is it possible they are? No, I, I think I they're different. Oh, no, no, you're right. I did champagne for that one and I did crystal copper for the new one. Yeah, because the copper is just like glowing in this one. And this one looks like it goes so better with the, the either gold or bronze. It pulls out those colors. And I think if I work this one again, like I'm going to finish this one and I'm going to make it all over again. I have lots of beads left and I'm going to do this next one in this color, which I think is like a, it's an antique brass. Ooh, I don't have you that one yet. Pretty. Oh, you don't have this one? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I, I'm working on my new newest beetle on order. Lori wants me to get square wire, and that looks like I have to get that one, too. Oh, yeah. No, I love bronze. It's really pretty. And so that's what I did there. Um, and then these are just regular loops. So, like, this one has a seed bead, peanut seed bead, all the way up. And each one of these is a different length. This one has three, and it's topped with a little seed bead. You don't have to memorize any of this because in the handout, I um, I broke down the anatomy of every single strand that's hanging here. Um, so it's all there, but those are just regular wrap loop. Wrap loop. I brought them up through the bottom of this to so that they would look a little tassel. And then here's a jump ring to my lantern. And this was the one you wanted me to demo, right? Was it that yeah, it's like you had a little fancy, fancy. Yeah, I love those sorts of wraps. 
Those are fun, yeah. So we'll demo that. If the rest of it's just easy stuff. Like I started to switch back and forth between 20 gauge and 22. Um, if I did a simple loop, which is what's here, I did 20 gauge. And if I did a wrapped loop, I went and used um, 22. But these are all 20 gauge simple loops. And it's literally just like two, three, and four. I did some kind of like graduation up. By the way, these look like gemstones. I know they're glass, but they have like a incredible glow. They're like, yeah, there's something really you, magic about this. Talk to some, who, oh, Neelay said the same exact thing on Wednesday. Did he? Yeah, I can yeah. see what, Neelay would love these. These are definitely his jam because so they're the colors. That, like, notice the same green, it's just, it's the green stone finish on clear glass. Gets you that really cool effect. That's really neat. That's really nice. This is a little hammered component there that I made. And I definitely learned how to make that watching Sarah use bail making pliers. So that one, um, you'll just want to snag a pair of those. Those are also then, on the on the website. Yeah, this one, that's that size. And that's that size right there. Just the top two. And then you just hammered it with what a nylon hammer? Yeah, I did. I used a, a regular, I got this at Bead Fest. I just went crazy with a nylon. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, and then the block that I'm using, I did bring that up in case anyone wants to see it. I think, do you have the blocks or you can no, use Sarah's? Um, if you use Sarah's affiliate link, this is uh, from from her. You can get it there. Yeah, I can grab that from directly from Beetleon too. Really cool, really cool piece there. Um, and that's it. You could also use um, the Wacker. You know those two like kind of nylon-y plates? You can snap mm -hmm. them together. That'll work too. Um, and that's, yeah, that's the pretty much the thing. Some chain, chain's optional. You can do whatever you like there. The other one, this one took, this was epic. This took forever. This was like a lot of wire work. The other one was super easier. Um, that one, I just did some little mini drops. And again, this is all all in the PDF, step-by-step step, with a really close-up picture for you to see every single thing. But I saved myself a lot of time on the chain. You can see how lazy I got. <laughs> it's really oh, that's awesome. smart. I like that. You, this, is, this is where folks can vary it up the most because you have a lot of beads to play with. We we kind of did a pretty bead heavy kit this this go round. So yeah. we'll be able to make this necklace. You'll be able to make a second necklace. Then you're probably able to make another matching gorgeousness to go with it. Um, there's a lot to work with because we did a lot of the coins and the flowers. I just wanted you to have a lot to play with to go along with your the new KOD tubes. For sure. And you did four caps, right? I think it was four. Yeah, you get four caps. So, so you can make a bracelet. And I had a bunch of beads left over from from what I did here. So you could actually make a one of these as a center focal for your bracelet. And then that would be a great way to use it, that other set. I love that idea. The other thing, oh, I want to mention is that the blue kit, we mm -hmm. changed a couple of the beads in it just to kind of for some variants. So you just notice that you'll have a couple different beads to work with generally in like a similar like a small bead and then a larger bead and you can yeah. kind of follow similar ideas of what danielle did in those two pieces and i think danielle said she's gonna when she has some time she's gonna work up a version with the blue kit final version with the blue kit too yeah i can walk you through the logic on that just real quick so i'm gonna substitute wherever you see a lentil i'm gonna substitute this one so the big lentils that are in the other kits look like this and i'm gonna substitute those I'm going to substitute rondelles for that. That's and of course, peanuts thing. are peanuts and flowers are flowers. <laughs> yeah, we only the flowers, the Like, I don't know if you got this this color from our friend, but I've never seen that color before. That, sure did. We, we, of course, we love our, our flower friend. I wasn't sure if you had the maid because that's not one I've seen. So, uh, yeah, that's that's stunning. I think that's one of the newer colors, and it it literally is so perfect for this kit. It really is. It really is. It's gorgeous. Well, I'm going to link those two um, really quick, and then hopefully I can get, I'll just go crazy with this and put that together, and it will look really cool. And I'll post it. I'll post it to the same place where the PDFs are, so it will all be together. Cool. Awesome. And, of course, jump chat and all that. Um, so how I did this link over here is I cut probably three or four inches. I always cut too much wire. just always do. I don't know why. <laughs> And then I grab some nylon jaw, my bows. So some nylon jaw pliers and just kind of straighten all that out. You definitely don't want it to be too um, 
too all bent up like that one was. And you could even go with a little more length than I did here. And then I'm going to get my round nose. So start with your round nose pliers. I'm going to just go ahead and make a loop. It's the same way we, um, we do like our wrap loops and stuff. So there's that one. And let me get my chain nose. Those are over here. Kind of flat nosy, chain nosy. Yeah, so what are those pliers? Oh, these are John Bead ones. These are at Michael's now. I, they look so different than I was used to on the, I guess it was yeah. round there, wasn't it? Yeah, they're Japanese. They're like, um, they're definitely thinner. Like the, the round nose pliers make a really tiny little loop. So interesting. And, uh, yeah, I took actually took me a little while to get my hands used to it. They remind me a lot of like the Zeron shape with like the pointier tips. Yes, yeah, they do. I feel like they do look a lot like Zeron. And they have um, different kinds of like pliers that are a little thicker than this too. But these were the ones I, I snagged because they were different than what I had. Because I, I have a lot of tools at this point. I've got maybe four sets going, and um, I tend to use my Lindstrom's a lot, but these are actually really cool too. But yeah, I had to train my hands to um, to use these because it was tricky for me to change. I mean, especially from Lindstrom, those are so comfortable to hold. Yeah, they are, and I don't even have the ergo. Oh my gosh. I know, right? I should get there. Go. I mean, you already have lens. I mean, I I, I have a whole I set of tools. I, I feel like if I buy one more set of tools, that's gonna be like, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how I can justify it. <laughs> I didn't know you were a tool fiend. I'm on oh, everything bead, bead weaving jewelry, and then it's not even just jewelry making. I'm getting all crafts. All crafts are crazy here. So um, I'm just right now literally being a mega perfectionist with, I think I might want to raise my camera because uh, I keep going off camera because I'm working really tight under there. That looks but I'll hold great. it up. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And so there's starting one, just regular old loop. You guys have seen those and made that. And I'm going to go ahead and start my top part of that loop. And so just bringing it forward. Up. Around, I just kind of naturally move back on the pliers to make the loop a little bigger, bringing these over to tighten it. And so from here, we're going to make that swirl. You want to go around once and then twice so that our fronts match. We have two nice little wraps here and two nice little wraps here. And then go ahead and go around the front of your bead. And if at this point you'd like to make that loop a little a little tighter that way that works okay and then from here if you can do it with your fingers great if not use your tools but just get this around twice there's once and and twice let me grab the little cutties here and i'm going to try to push that point down All right, so that's pretty much it for that pretty loop. And then you can either make that your front or your back, it doesn't matter. Um, the reason I did that was I thought it was gonna spin around on me when it when it was in the lantern connection, but it didn't actually spin around. It actually looks really cool. I, I like on this one, I didn't do that because the whole thing spins, right? It's like a- mm -hmm. And you get a little with that light play. It works both ways really nicely. It does, yeah. So there's that one without a loop. And here's that'll do it. This beautiful, gorgeous piece. This one with the loop. Well, I really like how you used one thing I wanted to mention is I really liked how you used the bell flowers kind of as to kind of break up the different elements of the necklace. So like ones that they're at the bottom to be the, the kind of the bead cap for the tassel. Yeah. Oh, and then nice. the other one splits the strands really nicely. It's such a creative use of the bell flowers. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I have a really good time with this one. I don't often get to just sit and twist wire these days. And so I, I really liked doing those. So pretty. So the last kind of piece here is that 
we'll we'll show off the blue version pretty soon when Danielle Danielle does a lot of things, but somehow does it all. Um, <laughs> but if you're curious, like kind of Danielle's idea for working up the blue version, we'll have that posted pretty soon. So just keep an eye out. As as of now, I checked the website. We have nine of the new blue kit left, which is crazy. So you can go to the website or the app. I do kind of recommend the app to folks because I currently have it set not to hide an item when it sells out, like the website. So if it does sell out, you can join the wait list and then maybe someone forgets their cart and it becomes yours. So on the app, you'll see at the top, the blue kit right there currently is still Pretty. in stock. So add, to, add to cart. And then you can also, that's also where you can join the wait list for the Halloween kit. That's we're going to be launching that while we're doing a class for it two weeks from today on October 7th. And we'll be launching the kit around then. And then Rachel Mouse was asking, like, are we selling the, the caps for for the tubes? And we have a limited stock on them. Tear is we kind of wiped them out. so They didn't have a lot left. But currently I see the oxidized brass ones and the gold ones are still available. And the other ones you can join the waitlist for also on the app. And then lastly, you can find the two seaweed mixes from the two original kits. Neither say sold out on those yet either. And that's the first time we've had Miyuki in the shop, which is kind of fun. So that's the full update. If you're kind of looking for some of these items, you can always, of course, always reach out to Sam's, reach out to us on the page or email us and we'll get back to you on Monday when we're back. And I think that's it. Do you have, do you, what do you have coming up, Danielle? Um, let's see. Um, this Tuesday uh, for Michael's, I'm doing an unboxing for the palettes that I got to help design at John Bede. Ooh, you're making like like tube palettes with them? Yeah. So um, we've been working on these for for a really long time. But um, for John Bede, I got to design seed bead palettes, and they are currently going into Michael's. Some Michael's have them already, and some don't, and they aren't quite online yet. But they I was going to ask, are they exclusive to Michael's? Because I, oh, I'm very yeah, you know, oh, well, these ones are, yeah. Okay. But that doesn't mean you can't design your own, too. I mean, you have an eye for color, so. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but I also, I should acknowledge that we do already have some Danielle seed bead mixes right here. That oh, that's true. That is available <laughs> from Sam's Bead Shop. So I, I should remember that we do already have some awesomeness there from Danielle. Oh, thanks, Sam. And, I and thanks for letting me plug those because I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. So you said you're doing a class with them coming up? Yeah. And unboxing on Tuesday, October 4th at 2 p.m. Cool. Central. Very cool. Yeah. They're really for beautifully me, packaged. Yeah. Yeah. I was excited that's about that. Cool. And then Wait, the rest of the things are just my usual. Your background's been updated. Yeah. All of my little tubes are gone. <gasps> it's crazy, right? It's that's so been behind me for like two years and I feel like, where'd they go? It looks like I you're in a new world. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like, so this camera setting is different than the zoom one from earlier, but you can actually see kind of like, I put a bunch of the beads down here too, but they're not um, super visible. Like I kept oh, some of the tubes there. They're yeah, the ones that are my favorites there. <laughs> <laughs> it's very pretty. I have to find some, some hooks for for here. For your, so you found that? Like somebody just like gave that? To, they were going to throw it away? Like, yeah, someone was getting rid of it. There was a second one, but it was not in that, as good of condition. So I took one of them and I, I was scrolling. I started scrolling for different clips that I could like hopefully oh. kind of be able to start adding. I want I would love to add like be able to store things. So I might go to Ikea because they have like different pegboard type things. And I don't know. I'm very curious how what I could do, do with this shutter. <laughs> Or even like in the kitchen tools section where they have those hooks for hanging the spoons. No, literally, that, that's what I need. Like Anything. that would work. Ikea sells those in bags of like a dozen, I think, or? I want that. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, anyway, that's, that's, that's cool. my little project. I love that. I love that you've updated your background two years later. Two years, yep. It's like- it's Finally like getting green, brown, brown, and beige. <laughs> wait, what do you say? Finally gonna have green, brown, and beige to work with. like. I've been living my life with no green and no brown and no beige for like two and a half years. It's a long time to not have those three colors because they're my favorite. Wait, did I not notice the whole time that there were certain colors not behind you? Oh, yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> Who picked the colors? You mean in the palettes? 
you said there were I'm confused. There's no, oh, Michaels doesn't sell those colors. Yeah, they didn't. So I wasn't able to work with them if I was doing projects for like for, for classes for them. I okay. know, would use what's in the plan, but there was no, um, there's only one brown and it was in the size 10. And there was no. <laughs> Why do they not sell more greens? I don't, or browns. I don't understand. There those was like emerald, colors. like silver line emerald, but no like olive green and no hunter green and no primary Kelly green, oh, nothing like that. Just disaster, like, disaster. My life was, every time I would make something, I'm like, it's purple again. Oh, because <laughs> you, when you made it to the Michaels class, you always had to use the colors that they had. Yeah, yeah, because you want folks to be able to find them, right? And oh so. my goodness. So they only had one. That's wild. That's wild to me. <laughs> Get another yeah. green. <laughs> we love green. <laughs> we need green. We need more green in our life. So this one, you'll, you'll be able to tell which ones I made. You'll be able to pick exactly which one. Which one. Oh, <laughs> like, I actually made that one. So I have one that's three greens all together. That is so smart. So now you can use them. <laughs> oh, my gosh. See, did y'all always, you, you always find the, you, the, how to get your way. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, like, well, let's go ahead and wrap up. Thank you, everyone, mm -hmm. for joining. And Danielle, for all your generosity to help us learn this today and help me make these kits so beautiful i feel so lucky to get to work with you um and call you a friend in the bead world and you don't even live that far away so a fellow west coast buddy in the bead world <laughs> west coast um so send your regards to your family from me okay. um and i hope to see you soon all well, we know we'll see you in two weeks from today for our yeah. halloween kit class so excited. It's going to be fun. Yeah, we'll release photos as soon as we have as soon as we have everything. We're not too far away actually. So Yeah. Um we will we'll, we'll get we'll let you all know when that's coming. Looks like lots of folks join the waitlist for that, which is super smart because those are going to go a little quick. Um but I think that's it for today. I got to go play pickleball. <laughs> My obsession. <laughs> Yay, cool. My yoga is now pickleball. <laughs> pickleball so, fun. Oh, it's have you played yet? I'm not really good at like sports where you have to be able to actually connect with something. <laughs> <laughs> you could learn, you could pick it up very quickly. It's it's not too hard. I would try and people would get a good laugh. So <laughs> everyone starts somewhere. I'm a terrible seed beater right now, but maybe one day I'll be a great seed beater. Oh, you will. Yeah, for sure. So maybe one day you can become a master pickleball player. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But with that, we're signing off. <laughs> Everyone have a great weekend. Have a good weekend. Bye, everyone.